UPSs and portable power stations have sort of become the norm in today's day and age, with them either being used to protect your components from power outages or surges, or for camping, or in South Africa, to keep your sanity, of course. So today we'll be taking a look at the Blue Yeti EB3A portable power station and UPS, so let's get into it. So Blue Yeti sent over this unit and this is the EB3A. It is a 600 watt portable power station with a lithium iron phosphate battery with a capacity of 268 watt hours. This unit can be charged in six ways, either via the AC cord that is provided with solar panel up to 200 watts via a car plug, generator, or a combo of solar and AC for up to 430 watt fast charging or via the AC and a car outlet. The battery is also rated for 2,500 cycles up to 80% efficiency, so you should be able to get a decent lifespan out of this before it actually starts degrading. Now this unit can be used to power devices up to 600 watt or a combination up to 600 watt. And if you wanna know how long this unit will last with whatever it is that you wanna to connect to that, all you need to do is actually take the 268 watt hours capacity of this unit and then divide the wattage of whatever device or devices that you wanna power with this unit and that should give you an answer in hours. For example, my TV draws about 170 watt. So if I wanna power that via the Blue Yeti EB3A, it should last for about an hour and 35 minutes. But of course, that number can change depending on how much the TV actually draws at a given time. And then of course, there's also a bunch of other things that could affect that outcome. What makes the Blue Yeti EB3A great is not the fact that it is a portable power station, because that is sort of the norm with the units that you have on the market today, but the fact that it is also a UPS, meaning that you can leave the EB3A connected to a wall socket and everything else connected to the EB3A, and then as soon as the power goes out, everything connected to the EB3A will just continue running as normal off of the battery of the EB3A. And then as soon as the power comes back on, the AC cord will then continue to charge the unit while still powering everything else as well. Now this also means that you do get surge protection for all of the devices that you have connected to the EB3A, meaning that with all of the load shedding with the power going on and off, your devices should have a longer lifespan with those. And then of course, just general power surges as well. Your devices should be fine that are connected to this one. So for demonstration purposes, if I have the EB3A plugged into the wall socket with the AC cord charging my phone, for example, if I were to unplug the AC cord like this, my phone would still continue charging as if nothing happened. The only difference is that the power is no longer coming from the grid, but now rather from the battery itself. And that is sort of how it would work with any other sort of appliance that you have connected to it. So whether that is your TV, a monitor, maybe a gaming console, or even just charging your laptop or anything else, as soon as the power disconnects, so for example, with load shedding or a power outage, then it will just simply switch over to the battery. There's no delay in the switchover as well, so it's not like your devices will shut down and then turn back on again. They just stay on running, so it either gives you time to then turn them off safely or then just keep them running while you don't have any sort of power. So for me, I would suggest putting on valuable items on the EB3A to use as a UPS. For example, your gaming consoles and stuff like that that could get damaged if the power just gets cut on them. For me, like I said, I have my NAS storage connected to it just because the NAS storage for me is highly important. And if it gets shut down without any sort of notice, then it could cause data corruption and I don't wanna lose any of my data. So that is why I connected it to the EB3A to use as a UPS. And for the last couple of weeks, because it is a low drawing device, I have never needed to sort of turn it off, but it does allow me the opportunity that if I need to turn the NAS off, because of an extended power outage, then I at least have the time to act on that and then turn it off safely. If you take a look at the front of the device, at the top left, you do have a cigarette lighter port. Below that, you have two DC ports as well as a DC button to turn on all of these ports. At the bottom left, you have your DC in port to charge. Next to that, you have an AC input to charge the unit with an included AC cable. And next to that, you have an AC circuit breaker. At the bottom right, you will find the three point plug for the SA version with the corresponding button to turn it on. And then you'll also find the light with a few different modes two USB-A ports, as well as a USB Type-C port that can deliver power up to 100 watts. 
On the screen you will also find some helpful information like the amount of watts being supplied and drawn by the device, the mode you are in, whether that is turbo or eco, a few warning lights for temperature, short circuit and overload. And then it also has a time indicator below the battery percentage to show you how much time is remaining to either fully charge or fully deplete the battery, which I really love as it removes the guesswork from how long this device will need to charge or how long you'll actually be able to power devices that you connect to this unit. And then lastly, the Bluetti EB3A has app support and to connect it to the app is really simple. All you need to do is open the app and turn on the unit, click on add device and it should show up for you to select from there. Once you have paired it, you can also click on it to show you some valuable information as well. So if you take a look at the screen, on the top left, you will see any power coming in via solar. So if you connect a solar panel to this unit, that will sort of be the power that is applied via that. Then you take a look at the top right, you will see the power coming in from the grid, i.e. the AC cord. In the middle, it shows the battery percentage. At the bottom left is the total draw from DC ports. And then at the bottom right, you'll find the total draw from AC ports. You can also use the app to turn on or off your DC and AC ports without needing to go to the unit itself. You can also change the charging mode, turn on eco mode, and even toggle your light all from within the app. The app is also used to upgrade the firmware of the EB3A. And then if you ever need to reference the manual, you don't have to actually keep the booklet itself. You can just go into the app once again and find your manual on there. Now, I absolutely love this for a lot of reasons. And I feel that all portable power stations should have some sort of app control, even if it's just for the controls. But I am a massive fan of the usage graph as it makes it really easy to monitor your power in versus power out, which can be great in so many different scenarios from using it at home when you have load shedding to ensure that you don't drain it too quickly to when you're camping to manage your power there to ensure that you have enough for when you actually need it. I also just love the graph. It's sort of oddly satisfying. Now the graphs are also really helpful when using solar panels with this unit, as you'll be able to see how efficient your solar panels are, whether you need to move them to a different location and how much it is actually supplying to the battery. And if you would need to connect the AC cord to charge it a little bit more. Now I've been using this unit for a couple of weeks now to power a bunch of different devices throughout my house, as well as charge my laptop and smartphones whenever the power is out and I need it to. And it works amazing for all of that. The unit is also really easy to carry thanks to its size and of course the handle that can easily fold away, meaning you can easily take it with you when you are camping, for work if you drive around a lot and you need to charge or power items on the go, or just around the house to use in different rooms if you wanna power different devices at different times. So as mentioned, this device is limited to 600 watt draw. So this is aimed more towards smaller items and not larger items like microwaves or kettles. But it does work great for consoles, TVs, laptops, and your phones. And I have been using it as a UPS for my NAS since I got it to ensure my NAS never loses power and that it is always running. For me, the advantages of having a unit like this, especially in South Africa, is way too long to mention in one video. But what I can say is that it has become a must for every household and the freedom that these units provide you is worth every single cent. You no longer have to sit in the dark while waiting for the power to come on and counting your toes or your fingers, whatever it is that you actually do while the power is out. You can simply connect your TV and router to either play games or watch your favorite TV shows. You can connect your laptop to continue working, or you can simply charge your devices to make sure that you stay connected when the power is off. So if you're looking to buy one of these, I have left a link down in the description below for that. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below. And then, as always, until next time, cheers.